for losers of the last 8 of 12. Our quarterback is saying this. Quarter, our starting quarterback is saying this. Then we go out and get slapped by Tampa Bay. <sighs> our reactions. Cue the music. <laughs>
But on the outside, we had absolutely no weapons. So yep. like in that sense, we were already behind the eight ball before we even walked into Tampa Bay. Correct. Correct. But you're so you're 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 compromised, right? Your offense is completely compromised. But they didn't even show up, Michael. They didn't even they didn't even throw their hat in the ring, is what I saw. That I mean, and that goes down to that was poor coaching. Preparation, right? Like I think this offense has been really poorly coordinated all season. It just looks clunky. Even when it has the weapons in there, it just doesn't look like it's well-prepared and well-coordinated. It doesn't have a plan. It doesn't have a purpose. And you try and do that against Todd Bowles' defense when he knows you can't throw to anything on the outside, and then he gets a lead on the scoreboard? And that's another thing. You're What's going you against do? a Todd Bowles defense that blitz Jalen 15 times. And God, I, you would have time. nobody, like you just said, he has nobody to throw to the outside. He, he was compromised to begin with. Look, the plan probably would have been to use Barkley as much as you can to try and put lipstick on a pig. Because when you're missing studs like that, all you're doing is putting lipstick on a football pig, right? You're right. just trying to cover it up and to see if you can do anything to keep yourself in the game. I think they were beat before they stepped out in that 107 degree feels like temperature heat. I swear to God, it was, they needed a little bit from their defense. It wasn't even a big ass from their defense. No, Just keep us in the game. The defense, the defense actually showed up. They actually got off the field and then Jalen fumbled, got strict fumbled yeah. in the pocket. That turned the whole game around after that. Because yeah. remember, they were driving and they were on the other side of Tampa Bay. They were around the 40 of Tampa Bay when that was happening. So oh, yeah. that, they were driving. They were, they were, they were moving. moving. And all of a sudden, that strip fumble, and that was it. I they think were, that just blew the whole – that took the whole wind out the sail after that. So they were threatening to make it a game, or kind of maybe, right? But they hadn't really stopped Tampa's – offense to that point they were trying to make it close on the scoreboard right they were trying to make it a seven point game and you know levante david did what levante david does he's he's got 20 you know forced fumbles in his career and they brought pressure and he stripped the ball out of his hands but i don't know dude i think the die was cast at 24 nothing before the eagles had a first down i mean you're chasing that many points Without Baker your two best like weapons. Up the middle. Baker was out there picking her apart. Baker yeah. at one point it was like 11 for 12. And I mean, he was just killing. And then it got to that point where he almost would have thrown three touchdowns that one time. I mean, I mean, literally Tyler, Tyler Palmer. Oh my God. He <laughs> hosted Darius Slay. And Darius Slay had this. The same on Twitter. And that's how I'm looking at it. It's unbelievable what we're seeing at this point. It's what unbelievable, you? like, what we're seeing and hearing at this point. Because now, after, after the game, we have our quarterback and now our coach. We're wondering, where is this relationship going? Because now, listen to what QB1 is now saying. Quarterback, as you enter the mind, want to find an identity. Oh man, this is rough. This is rough. This is rough. This is rough. Yeah, oh, I mean, what are we seeing? What are we seeing? What are we seeing? But I'm seeing, I'm seeing players. I'll tell you what I'm seeing. I'm seeing players, but they ain't buying what's being sold to them. That's that's about what are you? You're gonna put players on an island and cover Mike Evans one on one in the red zone? That's like stealing. You don't. You can't do that. Yet here, the Eagles' defensive coordinator saying, "Cover Mike Evans one on one in the red zone." What's that get you? We had you no know? pressure. We had absolutely no pressure all over the game. We only got like two sacks the whole game against the Bucks' offensive line that had given up 12. 12 sacks, Michael, in the last eight quarters going into that game. 
Gave they were seven. and, and gave up seven against the Broncos. Seven against the Broncos. Hutchinson was all over them the week before against the Detroit Lions. The only reason that they didn't lose that game, the Bucks won that game, is the Lions couldn't finish in the red zone. But Hutchinson just ravaged them, and the Broncos tore him up. And I'm like, wait till see what Baker does against his pressure up the middle. Never showed up. Yeah. Never even showed up when it mattered in the first 25 minutes of that game. And I'm like, where are the Eagles? No, the like, scheme was perfect. The scheme was perfect up the middle. They doubled, they doubled Jalen Carter up the middle. Yep. We had a couple one-on-ones. We weren't able to beat anybody one-on-one. I mean, it was a perfect scheme. It was the perfect scheme to stop us from coming up the middle. All they did was double team. Who's, what one man is going to beat two men on, on, on a block? Nobody. Exactly. Yeah. Right. You've got to look, and that's where you got to adjust on the fly. Again, I go back to looking at, and I like Fangio. I think he's a good defensive coordinator. I do too. I just don't see him making any, like, you need to do adjust. After the second drive, you need to completely throw what your plan was out the window and start throwing caution to the wind. Because Baker Mayfield was on fire, and the Bucks are, are, you know, opening up a can of whoop you know what on you right now. You throw away what you were doing, and you go to everything that you think you should do. And that's where I think, you know, everyone talks about the Eagles being like, you know, well, they're, real, they're in deep into analytics and all that. And I'm into analytics, too. Like, I love that part of football, the modern game. But football coaches, they also have to use their damn eyes. Open your eyes and see what's going on in front of you. Look at what's going on and be able to say, okay, my eyes tell me this. I mean – I go back on the Eagles, and I don't mean to bang, keep beating you guys up. I'm like watching the Falcons game, and I'm in the first half, and I'm like, what about going on fourth down does it tell you that your offense is driving up and down the field on the Falcons? You're going to go for it on fourth and four. It's in the first quarter. Take your three points because you need them later. Oh, you trust take, me. You oh, take trust it. me. I was talking about that in the last one yeah. that we were talking about with the Saints. Oh my God! You want to talk about? I was screaming at the television at one point. I think we were at it was like fourth and three. It was Correct. Like Ten seconds left, and he wants to go for it and just kick the three, go into halftime, and you'll be fine. But so that's you, those are the things that I'm talking about when it comes down right. to it. It is it has to do with coaching, but it doesn't have to do with coaching. But here's the thing: how we have to break down Nick Sirianni. This is very easy and simple. When you have a coach, he has to be good on either one side of the ball. If he's not an offensive coach, he's a defensive coach. If we're trying to figure out at this point, if we don't even know if he's an offensive or defensive coach, now we're trying to figure out, can you lead men to victory? And if you can't do that and you're losing your locker room, which – I'm hoping is not happening, but it's getting to the point. I think some of these, some of these layers are starting to peel that maybe he might be losing the locker room. But my point about if you fire Nick Sirianni, who do you have out there? You're gonna get you're gonna get Belichick, who's gonna want control over everything, which Correct. will not happen. That's not gonna happen. So at the end of the day, I say just ride out Sirianni. Let's go out here and see what we can do because we're at the bye. We're in the bye now. Right. This gives us a week to think, put all this stuff together. We're coming back healthy. Everybody will be back when we play the Browns in week six. And let's go ahead and ride this thing out. Let's see where it goes. By, by week eight, now then let's have this conversation. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree with you more because let's – I mean, don't forget, Eagle, you know, at the end of the day, in my opinion, you still have one of the five best rosters, top to bottom, one through 53 in the NFL. Whole and healthy, right? When your roster's whole and healthy, I still think you have one of the five best rosters in the NFL. And NFL is about players, right? NFL isn't about coaching. That's what's sort of kind of getting in the way here is the NFL is about playing, not about coaching. All coaching can do in the NFL is help a little bit, but it also could get in the way. And with Philadelphia, it's getting in the way, right? Like, you can't tell me those players, come on. Those players play ball. They're, they know. 
some of these decisions Sirianni's making, you don't, you can't tell me they're not on the sidelines going, what in the f- going on are we doing? Right. Like right. They, they're not going to question their coach per se, but they, they know ball. They play in it. Yeah. They, they understand what's going on. And let's face it, the guy's proven himself to be the dumbest guy in the room almost every time. I mean, that's what his decision-making screams to me, that he doesn't trust himself and he doesn't know what to tell his players. So how is their attitude going to reflect leadership? But never, ever, ever forget that at the end of the day, the Eagles still have one of the, what I feel is one of the five most complete rosters in the National Football League, and that matters. And it's the long haul, 17 games. I don't think you fire your coach now. That'd be a huge mistake. You just this is the devil you made the deal with, right? You had the chance in the offseason, 32-9, finished off the regular season, falling all over yourselves, got to the playoffs, got went down to Tampa, got embarrassed. Go down to Tampa again, get embarrassed right before you buy your buy. You had your chance in the offseason to undo your deal. And and you know, their decision was we're gonna stick with it. Well, guess what? Now you got to stick with it, right? If that was your decision in the offseason, and you're two and two still, I know, but you're still two and two. If that was your decision in the offseason at two and two, why does it change so much? Is it, does it look that bad? Was that four quarters bad enough? I mean, that was a pretty solid four quarters against New Orleans the week before, but this was so bad. It made you forget about New Orleans so fast, didn't it? It did. And it makes you look at it. Let's even let's go. Let's even rewind it back even two more weeks out of that. Saquon makes that catch. They go into Tampa Bay at three and zero. Oh. They lose it at Tampa Bay. Are we really stressing right. now? I don't think the pressure was would have been on that much going into Tampa Bay. I think everybody had been like, ah, we lost because we didn't have everybody. Right. Oh, we're good to go. We're, we're yep. going into week five. We'll be in. We're all right. Yeah. But at two and two now, it seems like, oh, we're on eggshells now. Now we got to figure this thing out. Like, he can go at any time. And that's where I'm like, let's just pause real quick. Let's pause. Right. Let's right. pause right now. How and good Sirianni are the commanders? Right. Might be doing a lot of the talking, but here's the thing. That something was happened since the 2022 season to now. Because right. in 2022, he wasn't doing as much talking, but he was going to talking. Now that it's we're not doing the winning, he's good. He doesn't do much talking. Now all of a sudden we want him to go. This is where he needs to be coaching. And guess what? Not really his forte per se. He's not, he doesn't seem like a leader. Does he seem like a leader to an Eagles fan? When you look at him on the sideline. And you're watching your football team struggling or winning. Tight game against New Orleans, you know, getting taken out behind the woodsheds by the Bucks in a hundred degree heat. Do you really see? Do you really think and see from what as an Eagles fan, you see your coach and you feel comfortable and confident in what he's doing? As of right now, when I'm no. looking at when I'm looking at him right now, I would say no. No. Nope. But but there is a diff- there was the reason why I would say no, you could almost have said no two years ago too. Correct. But the, there was there was a buffer. The buffer was Fletcher Cox, Lane Johnson. Kelsey. Those guys were they were the and with Jason Kelsey, they were the the ones that would like they were the buffer between Nick Sariani. And the team. Correct. Now you don't have those guys. Now you only have Wayne Johnson who's on the back end. Now you have these young young guys that are coming up. These young guys aren't going to, they're not going to want to listen too much of Nick Sirianni. But here's the thing. If your quarterback does not buy into your head coach, how is the young guy going to want to buy into your head coach? Yeah, the, 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 because the, I don't feel at this point, I think that Jalen Hurts is just trying to be biting his lip, biting his tongue, curling his lip. Like, if you guys ask me this question one more time, I might reveal something that you guys are going to be like, what? 
the you know what's going on. And it's showing up on the field. It, it looks like he's a quarterback. You know, uh, uh, he doesn't look like a decisive quarterback. He doesn't look like a competent quarterback. He doesn't look like he's buying what they're being sold. I mean, they brought in a new offensive coordinator, and it doesn't look any different. And and I'm not talking about Jalen Hurts. That's There's a p- responsibility that goes with the players. I'm looking at what they do as an offensive philosophy and what their approach is and what they're trying to accomplish, and I don't get it. But I we don't... also got to remember, got to remember, they only had one game together and they put up 38 points. Against the Packers, correct. Exactly. So correct. they now let's look at – we can look at week five, week – Week six, week seven, week eight, when they're healthy, like week five, they're this is a buy. So we're not worried about week five. Week six, seven, and eight, if they put up thirty-eight points again, yep, they're they're not come on now. We're 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 not really doing much more talking. And that and that would even put that defense would give them to get be able to put on their heels and let them go ahead and fly. So that's the whole thing. It, let's sit back and wait. Let's. Wait. So when you have a roster as talented as the Eagles, you're you're never going to be as bad as your. They're, they're never. They're not as bad as they look that on Sunday, right? They're not that bad. They're just simply not that bad. They're too talented, right? They're not quite. They might not be as good as they played against Green Bay right out of the shoot, right? You have to ride the up and down, and you forget seventeen weeks plus the buys, right? We're in week. We're in month one. We've got three more of these in the regular season. And you know what I mean? Right. Like you've got a long grind ahead Mm -hmm. and you're going to go up and you're going to go down and you're going to, you know, there's going to be good and bad. I mean, I'm a Bucks fan. I want to talk about my Bucks. We beat the Lions. And then we turn around and the bottom fell out against winless Denver at home. And we look completely unprepared and ready to play. Welcome to the NFL. You know what the NFL is more than anything? Week to week. Mm-hmm. It is week to week. It's week to week on the injury front. It's week to week on the production front. And it's week to week on the results front. It, it, it's just, you know, can you see what they're trying to produce every week? I know exactly what my football team is and who they are. And I don't think the Eagles know exactly who they are and what they're trying to accomplish as a football team yet. And the injuries have a little bit to do with it, but they also have nothing to do with it. I just don't think they have leadership. We just saw, I think the NFL seen a little bit of like a little, they've seen us at our weakness. They've seen us at our lowest right now. And I think we are going to ride after week five. Like I really feel like what we saw in week one Everybody didn't see in week two because we didn't have AJ Brown. Week three, we didn't. I mean, we if we don't have we didn't have everybody. Everybody's not there until week six. Right. Week six will be what we'll then start talking. And that's when we need to start talking. If we if we don't beat the Browns, let's start talking then. If we don't go, if we don't beat the Browns, that's when we start talking. I mean, that's when the the seat is on nuclear. But I still don't think he should get fired until the end of the season. That would be the the worst decision we would make. 300% agree with you, Michael, because you have to ride out this storm because beware, the grass isn't always greener on the other side, right? And you're you're not going to find it in week five. You're just not going to find what you're looking for in week five, because the person you hire in week five, you better plan to say, okay, this is our person for the next 18 months. Because that's what you're saying. If you fired Nick Sirianni now, whoever they choose to be the next head coach, you've got the rest of the 24th season and all the 25 season. That's the next guy. And I don't think this roster is ready for that. I think this team, because of the talent they have on this roster, if they could just get a little bit out of the way of the talent and let the talent show, get out of the way. Just let them go out there on Sunday. Just give them their instructions and get out of the way and let them go, right? Let them be because they're ta- they have ridiculous amount of talent on that roster. More talented top to bottom than my Buccaneers. 
by a mile. It ain't even close. The roster talent. Get a little bit out of the way and just let them have a little bit more institutional control and let them go. Yep. That, and, and, and see what happened. Man, the defensive front. The, the pressure off the, – the guys off the edges. Forget your ridiculous receivers, which are out. You're deep at tight end. You've got Saquon Barkley as a running back. And can Jalen Hurts find the belief and the confidence that he is, he is a good quarterback again? He's only going to find that from himself. He ain't going to find it from Nick. He ain't going to find it from Kellen. He's got to find that himself. In other words, I think the coaches have to let go of the reins and let this team – sink or swim on its own merit. And if they get out of the way, this team could be dangerous because they are uber and ridiculously talented. They are built to win now over the long haul. That's what I say. You can't say it no better than that. You can't say it no better than that. I would want to finish with that being said. And I want to thank you for watching the Skybox exclusively on YouTube. If you have any thoughts or concerns, Email us at the one, the number one skybox at gmail.com. I want to thank Andy Shea for coming through and blessing us with all his things that he was saying about those bucks. He even gave us a little bit of a blessing to the mock Philadelphia Eagles. But with that being said, I am Michael Fleet from Source of Life over the mic. Until next time, you already know what to do. Let's make it epic. Let's make this epic. If you like this video, just think, are we now concerned or confident with the Philadelphia Eagles.